Taylor Hawkins was a talented drummer who jammed with Sylvia, served as the backbone for Alanis Morissette before ultimately finding a home with the Foo Fighters. Dave's like my best friend. And even more than like a best friend, he's like a, like a brother. He really is. Both Taylor and Dave are renowned for their unmatched chemistry. But is it all true? Why did Taylor's close friends tell Rolling Stone magazine he wanted to leave the band and was overworked, only to take back their statements after the story came out? So was Taylor Hawkins taken advantage of until his very last breath? Let's find out exactly what really happened. Let's briefly flip the record to the Foos. Their drummer, William Goldsmith, had a fallout with Dave Grohl. He even went as far as calling him a playground bully when he left the band. Dave Grohl and his bandmates were in search of someone to fill his seat. This search coincided with Hawkins' time as the drummer for Alanis Morissette's tour. In matter of fact, Grohl and Hawkins met at the backstage of a radio show and their chemistry was immediate and unmistakable. Dave described it as an instance where he felt a strong, almost instantaneous bond with Hawkins. He recalled that Hawkins approached him with a beer in hand, enthusiastically expressing his admiration for the Foo Fighters' work. Grohl was struck by Hawkins' energy and personality, describing him as a spaz. He sensed that Hawkins was either his twin spirit animal or best friend right from those first moments. He would later describe this meeting in his memoir, The Storyteller Tales of Life and Music, as a kind of love at first sight. However, the opportunity for Hawkins to join the Foo Fighters came up unexpectedly. So Dave called me actually and he said, uh, hey dude, hey dude, well do you know any drummers? And I'm like, come on man. So he came over to my house that I was renting in, in Topanga Canyon and um, he uh, and we just talked and sat down and I, I had a drum set there. and. You know, we just knew automatically that we should be in a band together and be best friends, you know. He explained that he wanted to be part of a rock band rather than continuing as a drummer for a solo act like Morissette. This moment was a turning point for both Hawkins and the Foo Fighters. With Hawkins on board, the band gained a talented drummer, a vibrant personality, and a creative force. Hawkins brought his own style and energy to the band, contributing significantly to its evolution and success in the years that followed. Taylor also acknowledged the pressure of replacing William Goldsmith. It was a significant transition for him. He admitted that it took him a few years to become comfortable in the studio. As we all know by now, success comes at a cost. In an interview with Kareem, Hawkins explained that he took drugs to cope with the ups and downs of being in an enormously successful band because Foo Fighters live and breathe on stage. Unfortunately, he took it too far while on tour in 2001. While in London, he experienced a life-threatening incident. It was a jarring wake-up call for him. He described it as a moment that changed everything emphasizing the severity of the situation. This incident put him in a coma for two weeks and was a personal crisis for him and a moment of profound concern for his friends and bandmates, particularly Dave Grohl. I just felt so totally helpless, you know? In interviews, Hawkins admitted to falling into the trap of the rock and roll lifestyle that often glamorizes heavy partying. I didn't really know how to deal with, with the way you were supposed to be. And I thought that to be a rock and roller, you know, you have to be the Keith Richards, you have to be the dark partying, the real deal. He acknowledged that he had lost control, which almost cost him his life. He mentioned that despite the challenges, he wouldn't take any of it back, but also acknowledged the need for change. He also regrets was how worried it made Dave feel. Dave's like my best friend. And even more than like a best friend, he's like a, like a brother, he really is. And yeah, he was, as I would be with him, if something happened to Dave where he was on the brink of death, I would be losing my mind. Grohl was profoundly affected. He remained by his bedside during the hospital stay. 
He later expressed in an interview how this nearly drove him to quit music if Taylor didn't pull through. He described feeling that music equated to death, knowing what happened to his former bandmate Kurt Cobain. Rolling Stone wrote that after this hiccup, Hawkins had trouble reading, and he developed a strange tick, according to Chad Smith. But as he processed what he'd gone through, he attempted to improve himself. He made significant lifestyle changes. He turned to activities like mountain biking as a healthier way to spend his time and clear his head, which indicates his efforts to move away from the destructive patterns of his past. But unfortunately, these changes didn't last for long. Taylor Hawkins' life was marked by a mix of professional commitments and personal challenges. His last public performance with the Foo Fighters was at Lollapalooza, Argentina on March 2022. During this concert, he notably performed the band's hit song, Everlong, which turned out to be the last song he played in public. In the days leading up to his death, Hawkins was feeling the strain of his demanding lifestyle. The Rolling Stone did interviews with 20 people who were close to him. The most insightful account in the article comes from Matt Cameron, drummer from Pearl Jam, who worked with Hawkins. He mentioned that Hawkins had a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with Dave Grohl, where he expressed his inability to continue at the current pace. He said that he couldn't do it anymore. However, the day after the Rolling Stone article was published, Matt Cameron posted a response on Instagram. He apologized for any hurt that his statements may have caused and mentioned that his quotes were taken out of context, leading to a narrative he didn't intend. But according to close friends, Hawkins described this conversation as free, and it took a year of working up the guts to do. This shows his struggle with the intense stress of touring. He said he came to some understanding with the Foo Fighters, but it just seems like the touring schedule got even crazier after that. By that point, the band had already scheduled around 40 shows, and there were almost 60 more booked for 2022. Hawkins found out that the band had added a single performance in Australia for March. He got deeply upset and called a friend to express his frustration. This friend chose to hide their identity in the Rolling Stone article. On the other hand, a representative from the band later denied that there was a conversation about quitting, contradicting what Hawkins' friends had claimed. But it's undeniable that Hawkins was feeling physically and mentally worn down from playing numerous three-hour sets on busy tour schedules. In his final year, Taylor Hawkins faced personal and professional challenges. In June 2021, he shared with Rolling Stone his struggles with stage fright and the physical demands of maintaining a young man's intensity in a 50-year-old body. In December, his friend Chad Smith reported an alarming incident where Hawkins lost consciousness on a flight due to exhaustion and dehydration. In March 2022, while in Bogota, Colombia for a festival, Hawkins seemed upbeat, but kept texting his friend producer Andrew Watt. He shared a new drum beat he had worked on. However, that same day, the unexpected happened. Paramedics were called to his hotel for a guest suffering chest pain, later identified as Hawkins. Despite their efforts, he couldn't be revived. A preliminary autopsy raised more questions than answers, finding various substances in his system and indicating that his heart was significantly enlarged. But those close to him believe he wasn't using at the time. Hawkins' sudden passing left the world in shock. He had been a dynamic force in the Foo Fighters since 1997, a star in his own with his side projects, and a beloved figure in the rock community. As we reflect on Hawkins' life, we're reminded of the pressures faced by those in the spotlight and the importance of addressing mental and physical health. Now, we're curious to hear your thoughts. Which side are you with? Hawkins' close friends, or the Foo Fighters representative. Share your opinions in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.